How's it going, boys and girls? Brad the Guitologist here. Uh, the other day, my neighbor asked me to look at his Charvel Guthrie Govan signature. Uh, it appears that it's having some issues, and this is a real one. This is a, a USA-made Guthrie Govan, so we're going to get a chance to look at this thing up close. Really, really, really nice guitar, this thing. Um, roasted maple neck, flame maple body. I think this thing is completely finished all over probably tongue oiled would be my guess is what this is finished in but uh yeah super nice guitar let's get it up on the bench and we'll see what else wrong with it and we'll see what we can do to fix the little issues okay we got this thing up on the bench now <laughs> the main problem with this thing is uh when you sight down the neck you can see it's got a little bit of a it's got a lot of forward relief on it and it's too much it when you try to bend up high here it listen It just, it just frets out. And it should not do that on this flat of a radius ever. Uh, so we've got to adjust the truss rod a little bit. And we're going to just give it a few cranks. Try to straighten out this neck first. And we'll move along from there. I'm just sighting down the neck in between tweaks here. Yeah, that's looking pretty straight. Maybe one more tiny tweak on it. Yeah, maybe about right there. Let's try that. Now that neck is way better. Way straighter. Okay, I know it's hard for you to see, but I'm just sighting down the neck. Be easier if I could find my straight edge. I don't know what to do with it, but I, I never used it anyway. Um, I've always just sighted down the neck of all my guitars, and it's always been fine. <laughs> so, you know, never, never thought uh, that I really needed a straight edge. Anyway, let's see. Oh, hang on. Yeah, piss on it. You're not gonna be able to see it anyway. Just take my word for it. It's straight now. <laughs> all right. Now, there's going to be obviously a lot more buzzing because we're, you know, I've raised everything up and it was set up for a, a really uh, extreme forward relief. So it's still going to fret out until we raise this up. So we'll go ahead and raise, we'll just raise the entire bridge. Uh, looking at this bridge too, I, I you know, I'm really not, uh, really not certain about uh, the setup on this because it's, you'll see these are straight across. The E, the A, and the D, and then the the G jacks way backwards, and then it comes way back forward, not qu and and well actually yeah, and then straightens out exactly with the rest of them. Weird. Okay, that's not even close to being set up properly, and I don't know what it would have taken for somebody to get that far off, you know, from the factory setup. This is just going to be a quick setup. Like I said, that you know, it's, it, this thing actually has a couple of cool features too that you know you don't see on a whole lot of guitars. I mean, like I said, really killer flame, roasted maple neck. It's got the Guthrie Govan's signature. Govan. And yeah, I know some of y'all going to say you're pronouncing it wrong. It's Guthrie Govan or something like that. Govan. I get that every video I put up anymore. It seems like, but there we go. Govan. Uh, GG. 14, is that 2014? I thought these came out in 2015. 1400 I wonder if this is an early one and it's still got a uh, 2014 serial number. I don't know. Anyway, this has got the Spurzel locking tuners. Uh, let's see. The, this guitar headstock is the registered trademark of Fender Musical Instruments Corporation. And uh, being used with express permission from FMIC. Yep. But beautiful neck. Absolutely gorgeous. Feels awesome. And, I mean, that's got to be some kind of oil finish, like tongue oil finish. That's what it feels like to me. Gun oil, tongue oil, something like that. Um, got a deep cut down here on the bottom, which uh, helps with the reach on the... I guess if you're doing slide, you know, it would help you with the reach up there for sure then you've got this cutaway here which i like this style of cutaway without uh without any p plate on here at all because the plate i mean at the end of the day honestly the plate just gets in the way we also have a 
I don't know what these are called. This is some. It's um, uh, it's it's basically a stop for the Floyd rows, so you could sit how far it can travel and all that sort of stuff. And you could sit like if if you want to be able to uh, continue on a song whenever you break a string, something like that. You could set this so that it only goes forward and you can't raise up on the bar. Um, so it would allow you some some flexibility with that, um, and then it wouldn't go out of tune. Like if you broke a string in the middle of a song, which that's one of the big downfalls of Floyd's. But if you set this, you know, incorrectly, you wouldn't be able to pull up at all. Um, so you know, I don't know. Not sure how I feel about that thing. I, I have to give that some some careful consideration. Um, and also the other uh, thing is the the it's a Strat style jack on this, like a um, a big boat jack. But it's on the edge of the guitar, like this. Guitar body is completely rounded off on the top and the back. Really nice contours on this thing. Uh, really deep belly cut up here. And the body is finished the same as the neck. So it all has that really sleek uh, feel to it. The really tongue oily kind of feel. Um, which I think is just magnificent. This is exactly the way I want to see a guitar finished. Uh, this is beautiful. Gorgeous. Um, everything feels quality from the switch. I mean, that switch feels really nice and quality. Um, the pots are really easy to turn. Uh, they're very crisp. There's no scratchiness in any of the pots there. Just feels like really nice quality pots. Uh, chrome knurled knobs there. So they're real fast and easy to get to. Uh, other thing is it's not, it's not real close up like a strat would be. Like a Strat's volume knob sometimes gets in my way, um, if I'm honest. That's the only thing I don't like about a Strat, because if I'm wailing away, sometimes I accidentally turn the guitar down. <laughs> you know, it's it's possible for me to kind of screw up and do that on accident. And uh, obviously that can kind of ruin your day. So to prevent that, this seems to be a little further away from the strings. Uh, but like I said, we got to tweak this setup on this because we've got basically five strings straight across and then one that's severely jacked back that way <laughs> so let's figure out whether the intonation isn't even close but first we've got to raise this up let me see if i can find a uh, an allen key without having to go to my garage yeah there she is right there this might be it that's it that's it right there okay so we're going to back this out There's a half turn on the bass side. And we'll back it out about a half turn. Full turn, maybe. On the treble side. Yeah, we'll do a full turn to start. That's better already. Getting there. Go another half turn. Whoop. Am I going the wrong way? No, I'm, I'm going the right way. I'm going the right way. On second thought, we'll go another full turn. Or, or something like that. <laughs> See? No, no fretting out now. If you ever find your guitar is doing that, first things first, straighten the neck. Um, you might also want to make sure that the frets are level. These are probably fine. This doesn't look like it's been played a whole hell of a lot. It's just the setup was just way off. Um, so anyway, I think that's probably going to be close to getting that. Here's the other problem right now. When I try to use this Floyd, uh, listen closely to it. I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear that, but it's like, ar, 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 ar. and that, the reason it's doing that is because of this thing right here. It's it's um, these are tightened down, and they're tightened against that inner shaft. And the problem there, obviously, is. Uh, 
if you tighten those against that shaft, it's gonna it's gonna do that. Actually, it seems like maybe it's it needs lube or something maybe too. Let me go ahead and pop this ca cavity off here, or cover, rather. Man, these are some tiny screws, and one is missing. Yeah, somebody just tweaked around on this setup and uh, really got it way off from where it needs to be. I just don't know. I mean, here, you know another secret, honestly, to uh, Floyd Rose guitar? Um... After you get the thing set up, don't ever change st uh, string gauge again. <laughs> Seriously. Don't ever change string gauge again. And if the frets begin to wear, don't, you know, um, I wouldn't even bother setting the thing up, you know, to the new fret height or whatever. Just have it refretted and then just have it set up again and then just, you know, leave it again. Um, just to prevent you from having to keep screwing with it, you know? But this thing has got three springs. That's really, that's really more springs than I ever use in a trim. Um, I don't usually am only using uh, two on my trims, and that's usually plenty. Now this, I just have, I have no experience with this thing, and I, I'm not going to pretend I do have any experience because I just don't. I tell you one thing I am going to do is I'm, gonna, I'm just going to move this thing as far out of the damn way as possible. But see, the thing is, I think you're supposed to be able to block. It's basically, you know, it, it's a like a, a way to block it off if you want. You know, you can push this, and I guess you could kind of do it on the fly, you know, sort of in between songs or if you're good enough, I guess, maybe during a song. But you could set this at an exact point when everything is tuned up and the strings are stable and it's where you want it to to you know to stop when it um when the uh, the trim comes back uh you could set it that way if you wanted but you know obviously i'm not going to do that I'm, I'm going to set this thing all the way out of the way so you can use the trim you know um that's the way I'd like to have this guitar, where you could use the trim. I mean, what's the po point of a trim if you can't pull up on the damn thing, you know? Also, I am going to... Let's go ahead and get one of these springs out of here. Because like I said, I don't... <sighs> Maybe. Let me think about that. Hang on. It does seem like it's, it's pretty flat with the strings that it's got on it. I think these are some heavier strings uh, that I would probably run on it, too. And I wonder what the scale length of this thing is. What's the scale length? It seems like it's Fender scale. I mean, I'm sure it is because it's made by Fender. It's probably 25 and a half. Yeah. 24 and 3 quarters to the 12th fret. Or I mean 12 and 3 quarters to the 12th fret. Um, so you double that and that gives you the scale length. Like I said, I think these are a bit thicker gauge strings. Uh, these are probably 10s. Because like I said, normally with a... With a nine gauge set like a light set nine to 42 which is like i said that's what i would probably run on this if it was mine um i would probably only have two springs in the thing they're tens well went down to 9.5 but they're they're actually tens i believe shit i don't know it's jumping around everywhere but it looks like they're tens to me yeah, like 10 to 46. That's what we got on here. You know, so so they're not they're not real heavy strings, but they're heavier than what I would put on it. Um, now, if it was a Gibson scale, I would put 10 to 46 on it. All right, so we still got this problem with this thing. It's it's real real. It's real real loud. Can you hear it? I mean, here I'm gonna get the. I'll hit the microphone down here so you can actually hear this thing. L listen to this. This is this is counterintuitive to what you want your Floyd Bros to be like. Listen. <laughs> right? But see, we've got this this shaft down here. Um, and what is this thing? This is a this is a tremol no. It's a tremol no tremol no is what this is called. Can you see that? 
Sorry about all the weird shadows. The uh, Trimol No. I don't know. That, that looks pretty gimmicky and stupid to me. I don't know why he would even want this on his guitar. I, I would want to hear his explanation. Maybe I'll search around for that online. And uh, if I could find something on it, I will put it up here now. <laughs> no fine tuners, which was always one of my main objections to that kind of tram. Fine tuners sticking up like that, it just gets in the way of everywhere that my picking hand wants to be. And of course this quirky looking thing is the tremel no. If I tighten these, it locks. So when I have a drop D moment, all I have to do is reach in one string rather than all six repeatedly. So I don't know, did I find anything about it? If I did, it was there. If not, I don't know. Let's get some zoom spout. Cause this is um, this is basically like uh, sewing machine oil. And when we're not splashing cream on the tip, we're usually oiling up the shafts. <laughs> I'm gonna edit that up and we'll let that work its way down in there. And that should stop, hopefully stop that. Cause that's awful there it goes loosening up a bit now sort of jeez but that's awful man that's terrible you know some ideas seem okay and but at first but then then in practice it's like they do crap like this and it's just honestly it's like making the thing um, really really weird Maybe he just wants to kill all the uh, flutter that a normal Floyd would get. Maybe he just doesn't like uh, trim flutter. Is that what he said? Did I find a clip? I mean, it definitely needs needs oil regardless. And I'll probably go ahead and pop the screws out and oil uh, the screw holes too here. Might as well. Yeah, man, it, it's it's really just sticking. It's just sticking. Even with this um, short uh, of a cylinder right here, from here to here, you know, never mind from here to here, which is about, well, from about right, right here to the end of that piece, from there to there is much longer than that. Even this little short thing is sticking on that little bit of, uh, of piston or shaft or whatever you want to call it. I mean, back it off and loosen it. I mean, if it was me, I'd just yank the damn thing out of there. <laughs> I would not want that crap in my guitar. But I'm no Guthrie Govan either. So, you know, what do I know? I wonder if maybe it's for like drop tunings or alternate tunings. Like in the middle of a show, if he wants to reach back here and tighten everything down. Um, and then push, push this all the way forward. Tighten that up. And then tighten these two. So that everything holds. When you get it tightened down, now you can drop D without everything else <clears throat> kind of going out of tune and then the whole band would have to kind of retune and you would lose your tuning with your piano that's what he's doing i bet because what happens if you if you drop d if i drop this e down you'll notice that this this floyd will want to go back down into the body and and all the other strings are going to raise and pitch as a result so they're going to go and it'll be ever so slightly but it could be enough that it throws out intonation and stuff with a band. So, and even if you had a guitar with like a D tuna or something like that, that's not going to help you. You have to have some way to block up the trim, um, you know, for that that set of songs or that song or whatever that's in the alternate tuning. So anyway, but it, the the obviously the problem with this mechanism is it's is it sticks if you don't lubricate it. It's way better now smooth uh, it's getting a little bit of chatter like it's here and there but it's way better than it was but anyway I'm gonna leave it loosened up and I'm gonna leave this backed off as far as it'll go so that'll give you the most uh, up pull that you can possibly get that space between there and there will determine that you could also set it to uh, you could set this where you could hit a note exactly so like if you wanted um, some kind of predictable, almost like a B bender type of thing, where when you um, bend back on the Floyd, that it goes up a, pre a predictable increment. Um, you could sit here and fiddle with this and set this block where it would be, 
you know exactly the correct distance where when you raise this back it will stop at a particular note so maybe i don't know maybe he's doing something like that too like i said i, ha I have not looked that up so i'm i'm guessing those are the two benefits that he likes i mean he's a monster player he's the kind of guy who might even be able to pull something like that off you know <laughs> like actually utilize that capability a player like me shit i would i you know i'd screw that up i start monkeying with stuff on the back and i i would i would lose that screw so fast i mean these these are very short screws i would lose one of these so damn fast it wouldn't even be funny because they're tiny the flaw i see with this is and the reason i think it has the chatter in it when you tighten this down you're putting little um, indentations on the shaft and if those are machined to a, a pretty tight tolerance basically you're boogering that all up and you're causing little burrs that are going to then stick inside of there and cause that to not want to slide back and forth as smoothly especially over time you know it would get worse and worse and worse i don't know maybe they sell these little rods that you can replace the little rod and maybe that helps i you know after a certain amount of time i don't know but that's just a weird mechanism dude to me at that you know it does what it i guess is intended to do but it's not it's definitely not something that'd be the first thing that came out of this damn thing if this was my guitar <laughs> Okay, let's see how far off the intonation is. And you'll hear a lot of people, oh, you've got to get that up in the playing position to really check the intonation on that. How, okay, you do understand that into, intonation means the, uh, the distance is it, well, the intonation is adjusted by adjusting the distance between the nut, which is down here, right? And the saddle, which is right, and I've had people make this comment before, and, I, and I, it's, been, it's, it's kind of baffled and puzzled me where they're achieving this logic. Because how exactly does having this resting on its back or having it resting like this change the length from there to there, i.e. the scale length? How does that change that? Well, it doesn't. What it does is it very lightly moves the neck upward from some uh, from the downward pressure from gravity but it's going to be so utterly minute it's not going to appreciably change the distance of the string at the 12th fret down to the fret itself so that distance is not going to change so you when you push that fret down to fret the note it's not as if you're bending that note higher right by any appreciable amount um, from having it set up, you know, this way in the playing position. So I have people tell me anyway. I've had people tell me that before. Oh, you, you idiot! You don't know what you're doing. I get that a lot, man. I get the whole you idiot, you idiot this, you idiot that. You don't know what you're doing. Haven't you watched Dan Erlewine? <laughs> you know, Dan Erlewine's awesome. I love his stuff. You know. Uh, there's some great luthiers on this website, man, on, on YouTube. There's uh, online. They show their work. And they're wonderful, you know. Uh, Ted Woodford's great. Uh, Jerry Rose is great. You know, all that stuff. I, I like all, watch all that stuff, all those guys. Whole thing. Um, but you got to use a little freaking common sense, you know what I mean? Just of your own. Uh, don't just, uh, I don't know. I just... <laughs> And don't even get me started on the amps. I mean, the amps is even worse. I mean, if if um, the guitar luthery thing uh, was was bad, the the amps is even worse because everybody has got a has got their own ideas, uh, especially now about amps. Because there's a lot more people doing amps than there was when I started out doing this on YouTube. Pretty much when I started out, there was maybe me, uh, Unc Uncle Doug, El uh, El Paso amps. I think is one was one. Um, D, of course, D Lab, who, who's great, um, and then you had you know the oddballs like Mr. Carlson who did electronics, but it was mainly other stuff like radios. But you did have oddball you know video from this person or that person. But we were pretty much the biggest ones on YouTube doing that stuff. And now there's a lot more you know people doing it, and it's a lot more frankly know it alls who. Uh, 
who turn their noses up at everything that you do or have done in, in the past. And, you know, I, I admit I haven't always done everything to the, um, perfection in any, pretty much anything, you know. But does that make me a hack? No, it doesn't make me a hack. It just means I'm not afraid to fail, you know. I'm not afraid to try something, uh, figure out, oh, okay, no, I was wrong about that. I was thinking about that wrong. Just ignore that. Laugh, laugh about it and move on. It's not a big fucking deal, you know. Don't stop taking yourself so damn seriously. It's not. It's not. You know. I mean, as long as you haven't uh, ir irrevocably destroyed something that belonged to somebody else or something, I mean, it's it's okay. Chill, you know. Chill. <laughs> anyway. So, there's that. Rant over. Now, now this isn't my strobe tuner. I could go get my strobe tuner, set it up here, and do all that. Man, this dude, is he's not going to be that. He's not going to be shredding the neck, put it that way. It just needs to be close. But that, that really is. That's actually pretty darn close. Yep. That's, that's good enough for government work on that one. You see how it's jumping up when I first hit the note. It's kind of jumping um, flat. So I'll keep that in mind. If it jumps flat just slightly like that, then it's pretty much the same as it was when I was hitting that uh, harmonic. It's pretty close. I'd say close enough. I can't believe that. I mean, those are straight across. Those are pretty much dead straight across. And they're... Makes me wonder, uh, probably the strings. I should probably just change the strings at this point. Um, but like I said, this is, this is just... I'm just doing this as a favor for my neighbor. This isn't anything I'm really... wanting to spend that much time on, to be honest. I'll, I'll give him some strings if he wants to change them, but changing them on a Floyd is, I mean, I can think of quite a few things I'd rather be doing than changing strings on a Floyd. For free, you know what I mean? <laughs> Okay, that's flat. So that's flat. Somebody has moved that to the wrong spot. So let's see if we can fix that. You see how this maxed out? We're gonna have to take that screw out of that hole and put it up here in this hole. So to do that, we gotta loosen the string. That's just kind of a fact of life with Floyd Rose type. Well, this isn't actually a Floyd Rose. Maybe it's licensed. I don't know. But what I like to do is just is unscrew it and then kind of let the whole saddle um, sort of move move the screw up for me. Just let it kind of drag it forward instead of trying to fight it to get it up there. So see, that's that's up there now. So now I can just kind of, I'll tell you what I'll do. I mean, those other ones are pretty much level. <laughs> I'm just going to put it level. We'll start with it level. Okay, now it's, it's clearly jumping sharp. Not jumping shark, jumping sharp. Uh, we're gonna loosen the string just a hair. And what I like to do is, um, actually I'll get another Allen wrench or something like that and just kind of uh, put it on the very front edge of the saddle and then loosen this ever so slightly while I'm pushing on that. Let's try it right there. It's 
Still jumping sharp. Uh, of course, it's jumping sharp open as well, so let's try it again. Yeah, still a little sharp. I don't know. Maybe it was closer where it was. We're going to kick it on back a little bit further. I don't think it was... Uh, it wasn't right where it was to begin with. It was too far back. Dead on. You see how the open note is showing that it's in on this tuner, um, and this is some, a way you can kind of do it without a strobe um, and get it, you know, closer than just trusting the first reading that you see on a tuner like this. When you when you pluck an open string, it's saying it's in tune, but if you wait long enough, you'll you'll every now and then see it kind of kick um, flat. So just keep incrementally bringing it up until it's no longer kicking flat, either open or on the harmonic. And now you can test the the twelfth fret, and it's not going anywhere there either. So we're, I mean, we're close enough. We're we're well within somebody's vibrato there. You know what I'm saying? So that's in. I am I am detecting a little bit of a a hint of a buzz right there. I think there might be just a little bit tiniest bit of a burr of something in the uh, nut slot here. So I'm gonna just run my finger now through that nut slot and see if I can dislodge whatever's causing that little bit of buzz. Yeah, there's definitely some crap coming out of that slot. So. I'm thinking that's, that's what it is. It's a little tiny microscopic piece of crap coming out of that slot. That's causing that, or it could be on the saddle. I didn't really see. Or it could be something actually um, sticking up from one of the, uh, the frets or a piece of fuzz or something like that on the fretboard. Really, this thing needs a street a string tree up here. Um, I think they they were going for a setup where they they put these spurzels on and, and the spurzels. Uh, if you'll notice, the low E has a higher shaft; it, it comes up higher, and then this one goes down a little lower, and then lower still, and lower still, and, and until you know this high E is, is barely a nub down there. So I think they think theoretically that's supposed to relieve any need for a string tree but I don't think so I think this this still needs a string tree maybe even two you know because uh, it's it's just such a dip right there it, 
And listen, listen to the buzz. But if it had just a string, a string tree enough, just enough to bring it down that far, right there, that buzz goes away. Now, some of that's due to the tightening of the string, and so when you um, when you're tightening the string, the amplitude of the movement of the string is actually um, lessening slightly. So that could be it too of what's fixing it. But I'm guessing also it has to do with the. Uh, uh, something about this nut right there on that just on that one slot There's just an ever so slight bit of buzz there. I'm not gonna sweat it. I'm not, honestly like I said I'm not gonna sweat it too bad. I don't think he's gonna Really sweat it either. He's playing in his living room, you know, and it's uh, like I said, he's not gonna be shredding on the thing He's just plucking around so uh, if he was going, you know in a studio or something I'd and he wanted to pay me properly to set up his guitar you know i would i'm pretty neighborly but when it comes to stuff like this it's like i you know i'm not i don't want to uh uh i don't want to die an early death because i set up all my neighbors floyd roses right <laughs> that's, because that's what would end up happening eventually i love floyds i love playing them but i've never been fond of messing around with them um, you know to set them up and stuff. I like I said, I'd rather just set it up and leave it um, That's why I would never really want that that stupid thing on the back because I think it honestly It's probably when you try to release this back to z the zero point. It's probably catching and fucking that up more than anything <clears throat> Okay, so actually before we leave the bench with this thing we might as well see what's under the cavity here and uh I mean, I can already tell you it's going to be some high quality stuff just from the feel of the controls. I'm telling you, this this thing's quality. Every single piece of it. I mean, this this even is, uh, I don't know what that is. Is that aluminum? I think it's aluminum. Painted aluminum. So here we've got uh, EVH labeled pots. And we've got a five-way super switch. And by super switch, I mean it has two. We've had some switches out recently, so this one has uh, two rows of the contacts, whereas you know a regular five-way would only have one row of contacts over here. So yeah, there's some some decent stuff. And uh, what is that cap? That's a not that it really matters to be honest. A Fender uh, Fender point zero five cap and like I said EVH pots so that explains the smoothness might as well go ahead and clean these while we're in here I'll go ahead and spray them out uh, with some lubricant cleaner it's probably gonna be about the best I can get it um, this does have a, a bleeder cap you can see here too I did not see that at first but there is a there is a, a treble bleed. I see that little tiny, I don't know, that's probably a, I'm guessing something in the 200, maybe to 500 pico farad, somewhere in that range. But yeah, man, like I said, uh, really good stuff. High quality. I mean, it's, it's, it's USA made. It's basically a USA made custom shop fender is what it is. It's what we're looking at. Okay, so I wanted to show you something with this before we uh, do any kind of playing on it. You know I was messing with this little mechanism, uh, you know, lubricating it and everything. And I'm in the process of tuning it, but I want to show you something. Watch this. So, so the G string, I'm going to tune a G. I don't know if you can see it or not, but you see the little arrows down here. They're kind of, kind of down here toward the bottom. I hope you can see that, more or less. It's, you know, close to a G. But if I press on this, now it's up even closer to the G. Press on it again, and now it's sharp of a G. <laughs> Look. So, I mean, no matter what I do to try to lubricate this stupid mechanism right here, it is not allowing uh, the free movement of the bridge enough to, to return to center. It just won't. I mean, listen to this thing. Listen.
I don't know if you're able to hear it or not, but you can see it. You can see that little piston sliding in and out there. Well, it's making all kinds of racket, just like little little <laughs> noises. And it's just, you know, once it gets any kind of boogering up inside of there, it's not going to slide freely back and forth the way it's supposed to. You know, furthermore, as this thing moves up and down, the angle at which um, these two objects meet is going to change the whole time. So this whole this whole um, claw would have to change pivot point, or not, not the pivot point would have to change, but the angle of the shaft would have to change along with this piston because this piston, when it moves, the angle is changing or it's trying to change. It's not merely moving straight in and straight out. It's moving downward at an angle because when you, when you pull down on the, on the bridge, it's going at an angle and dragging it downward at an angle. So that that is a what am I going to say about it? it it's um I was going to put him in, uh, put, put. it's an idea. It's an idea, but it's not very well executed and it is hindering the free motion of the of the bridge. I don't I mean Seriously, Guthrie, go van. You know, you, you you wanted this crap on your guitar. I mean, I don't know. Are you friends with the company or something? Because that, to me, I I don't know what what you're thinking with that. That is not smart. I mean, you're a smart guy, and because I mean, I, I listen to Guthrie go van talk. He can talk about music and just keep you enraptured. The guy's a freaking genius. Um, but this is not genius. <laughs> this is the opposite of genius. Well, I wouldn't say the opposite of genius. It has a spark of genius about it. it it's a good idea if you want to quickly kind of block up a trim. But man, it, it, it's not wearing well and it's not allowing this bridge to return to center. It is, I mean, I can feel it just grabbing it and moving it up and down. I can feel the the vibrations of the thing as it's trying to slide in and out it's just it's it's terrible so i mean before i can even play this thing for a demonstration purpose i'm gonna have to use the block off mechanism i'm gonna have to i'm forced to do it i don't want to but i'm forced to because if i don't tighten these screws down all the way this bridge won't it, it, the guitar won't stay in tune I can't tune it. I mean, you'd really be better off with a heart. I mean, choose either or. It's, you know, if you need a guitar that get, needs to go in drop D or something for a song, get a hard tail and set it on the stand right next to you and grab that for that song. You know what I mean? Or that alternate tuning. Uh, messing with this, trying to get the best of both worlds out of a, um, you know, a, a Floyd Rose style sort of bridge is really dumb and furthermore the more i you know kind of look at this thing the bridge and the whole blocking me there's locking mechanism i can understand not want wanting the locking nut of like a floyd rose um because it's bulky it kind of can get in the way it can kind of stab your hand down here on this end a lot you know when you're down here low it can sort of, you know, not feel all that comfortable. So I get it why he would want to just a regular bone nut with the locking tuners. Fine. Um, and this end does lock as well. But where are the fine tuners? You know, why dispense with the idea of fine tuners? Because it's such a great idea. I mean, the only reason would be if you wanted, I guess, easier access like this to, to your controls. And you didn't want to have to slide past those fine tuners to get to your controls. Maybe that makes sense. Um, but you're losing some capabilities by not having the fine tuners down here and having to rely on, you know, all your tuning done up here. Particularly when you've got this crap going on and it, the thing won't even go into tune in the first place. So, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just going to shut up and play the thing. How's that? <laughs> Other than that, this is a this is a magnificent guitar. I mean, look at this thing. Look at the flame on it in the light, in the sunlight. We've got a little bit of sunshine coming in today, and you can kind of 
you can really get a better sense of the quality of this instrument. I mean, that that neck, that roasted neck right there, geez, that thing is, this thing is sleek and sexy. Um, but I absolutely would want to rip that piece of crap out of there. I, I, 
that's why it's sounding so um, just fleshy. <laughs> I, have, I usually use this this fingernail as a pick, and it's not it's, it picks fine, kind of on the upstroke, but on the downstroke, it's, I don't know. It's kind of not. It's not right. <laughs> This the electronics in this the, the balance between the pickups and everything and the uh, the tones that you can actually get uh, are extremely nice I mean this is that sounds like that might actually be the center pickup right there okay so you got these two coils right here in this quack position and then in this position you got that coil that coil so that whole humbucker and this whole humbucker are in what parallel probably and then here in this position we've got that coil and then and then this one it might actually be the the whole humbucker and that coil. That might have been what we had here too. It was just hard to tell. Yeah, that is what we had here too. So we had this humbucker and this and the middle position. Yeah, and then we've got this humbucker in the middle position here. And the middle position itself is is the is the both humbuckers. sound and electronics no complaints whatsoever about the electronics no complaints whatsoever about the woods used in this thing about this cutaway right here this feels awesome right here the only way that this could possibly feel better is if it was um, like a, a, a neck through maybe or, or, a, or a set through neck or something like that but honestly I prefer bolt-on necks um, to set necks and, and neck throughs and stuff these days um, I like bolt-on necks because there, there's something about the transfer of energy between the neck and the body on a bolt-on that's just um, different. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I, I love this guitar. I love the guitar. The only thing I don't like is that stupid bridge. I hate that bridge. You know, I, I, um, it's not that I hate the bridge. Let me take that back. Hang on. I don't necessarily hate the bridge. I hate the way that this is implemented uh, with, with that stupid thing. I hate that mechanism right there. That's dumb. Dumb. 
That's the first thing I'd rip out of here. Because then it would have returned to not being in tune. Which is the opposite of what you want with a locking tremolo system. It defeats the whole purpose. Anyway, that'll do it. This is a, uh, like I said, I think this is a 2014, so what is that, the first year uh, for the Charvel Guthrie Govan Signature a Flame Top Guitar. Yeah, that'll do it for this video. I'm gonna get this guitar back to my neighbor who's been without it for a little while now. I didn't even think to check the case. There's uh, all the information's here. This definitely is a 2014. I think that's the first year for Guthrie Govan Signature models, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, there's all that stuff, yep. He's got all the hang tags. He's got the original um, owner's manual. And warranty card here. Uh, the thing is, it, it actually does show, uh, it shows a Floyd Rose with uh, Uh, with the with the fine tuners, so I don't know if they um, changed that or what. Here's what the owner's manual should look like for this model. They even have instructions for restringing. <laughs>